Welcome everybody to part 2, Blind Engineering. In part 1, our cars learn to drive in a simple racing track, and transferred the skills to more complicated maps. In this part, we let not only the brain evolve, but also some physical properties of the car. These are size, aerodynamics, grip, motor power, and weight. While the size of a car increases its grip on the floor and the power of its motor, it leads to an increase in mass and reduces the amount of space a car has on the road. Especially in curves, the size is a big disadvantage. The aerodynamics of a car increases the maximum speed as well as the maximum acceleration. The drawback is again that it is very difficult for longish cars to drive in curves. In the first generation, both, the neural network and the shapes are initialized randomly. We see, that at least in the beginning, smaller cars tend to be favored. A crucial advantage of an evolutionary search is, that as long as you can define small mutations that on average change the behavior of the agent not too much, you can apply it to any kind of problem. Hence, we can use it for a much richer set of problems than most of the alternative optimization procedures. When training an evolutionary algorithm, we basically need to make three choices. How many parents, how many children, and how large is the mutation rate? These three hyperparameters can be dynamically altered over the generations. Let's discuss the three hyperparameters in more detail. Since the number of children determines how many mutated neural networks are tested, it is obvious that the increase in this number will also increase the likelihood to find a better solution. However, doubling the number of children also doubles the computational cost. Hence, we are forced to make a trade-off. The number of parents is crucial as well. For a fixed number of children, it is obvious that we cannot have too many parents. For example, if we have half as many parents as children, we have only two mutations per parent. On the other hand, having more than one parent can help to escape local optima. At this point, we have a car that can safely drive. We will now fix the duration of the race and look for the fastest car. Let's now discuss the mutation rate a little bit. For those who are familiar in training neural networks using backpropagation, it is very related to the gradient step size. In the first generation, the connections between the neurons are initialized completely randomly. Hence, we cannot assume that a good solution is very close and it is very beneficial to choose a large mutation rate, that is, adding strong noise to the connections. However, as our agents become better and better, we should not make too large alterations anymore. There is a fundamental dilemma, namely the exploration-exploitation trade-off. Any agent needs to deal with it, whenever he has to act and learn in an environment where no prior knowledge of the rewards received for the actions they select is available. As an example, assume that you know a fabulous beautiful holiday place which is not very expensive. Given only 4 weeks of holiday per year, why should you risk to explore new places where you could enjoy your holiday even more? In evolution, a large mutation rate favors exploration, where a small mutation rate exploits the found optimum. It is known that bacteria are masters of regulating the mutation rate. Under environmental stress, they start to increase the mutation rate by many factors. This has the effect that many bacteria of the new generations are much less fit and might die. 
but as long as a few individuals manage to adapt to the new environmental conditions, the population is saved. We come to our final result after 20 generations. These cars are very well adapted to this kind of race. Thanks to the death of hundreds, fast, strong and aerodynamic cars have evolved. Truly a masterpiece of blind engineering. I hope that you had some fun with this video. If you could obtain a better intuition of how and why evolution works, that is great, and if you now feel inspired to write your own evolutionary algorithm, that is even better. Thank you for watching.